Uh, welcome everybody as we uh, start to filter in here. This is uh, the Green Dialogue and today we have a special speaker. speaker. Um, thanks to some of the networking of our Green Burial team. And if it's okay, Gabi, would you mind just briefly introducing Peter? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I, or we, I can, can, we can let Peter I, introduce himself if you like. Yeah, maybe Peter should introduce himself. That would probably be the best. Uh, yeah. Thanks thanks for joining us, Peter. Go for it. Um, okay, so I'll just start then yeah. by sharing my screen as well. I just have a few slides. Most of them are um, pictures. Did anything share? There it is. Yeah. You see it. Okay. Yeah. Great. So I'm going to, I guess, just tell you what I've been up to and what we're doing and uh, clue you all into that. So my interest in this started about 10 years ago, I think, got turned on to the idea. And um, several years ago, kind of started looking in earnest at actual properties. And it was really fun. Instead of going to um, a park, walking around trails, I would go to a new property and stomp around in the woods and try to assess whether or not this could work for green burial and especially conservation burial. And um, my wife decided that we needed to get this out into the world. I really wasn't quite ready for anything yet, but we made a website and we launched it in end of 2020. And shortly after that, we were invited to give our first presentation at a church nearby here in Grand Rapids. And pretty much based on the response there, which was overwhelmingly positive, um, we were like, okay, people actually want this. And if we can provide this, this will work. So that kind of gave us the encouragement to once we actually find a property that kind of checks all these boxes, we need to jump on it and um, start moving from there. So actually this, the very same month, a property came up and it checked all the boxes. So for me, that included um, less than an hour from Grand Rapids and it needed to be at least 20 acres. So it could qualify for a conservation burial ground with the Green Burial uh, Council. And it needed to have good access year round. So that meant being on a road that was not too far away from civilization that was plowed during the, the winter. And it needed to have some sort of aesthetic quality to it. Um, so a, a native community of some sort. And it had to be basically all the, the big enough properties that were close enough um, and cheap enough <laughs> were all swamp. So it needed to be high and dry, essentially. And the topography needed to be pretty simple, like flat, high and dry was all good. And so this one came on the market and it checked all of those for the first time. And so we had to jump on it pretty quickly. Um, according to the ordinance from the township, there was nothing that prohibited cemeteries in that zone, which was a, a low density residential area. And so there was a lot of interest for the property and we're like, okay, I guess if we really have to, we can sell this in the future, but let's get it now and then try to figure out things later. So um, we got it. And once we had a place uh, and, you know, a location where we could swap out actual images from the property on our website and everything, we started this thing called a wait list, the wait list. And that was basically where people who, knew that they wanted this sort of option, um, who actually would want to be buried there in Nuego and were willing to pay for it, um, they could sign up and give us all their information. And so that started, I guess, early 2021. And since then it has been growing and growing, which is uh, really exciting and encouraging. But um, right away, we also started uh, talks with the township and our initial meeting with them was pretty good. Um, nobody said no. Nobody was really against the idea. They were just kind of like, oh, interesting. Haven't really heard about this. But, you know, if it's your land, you should be able to make money on it and <laughs> whatnot. 
Um, but in one of the the following meetings, uh, we we're, weren't actually present for that one, but they met and they talked about us again. And they decided that there were a couple things that they needed from us in order for them to feel okay with um, basically entertaining the proposal further. And one of those was a site plan, which was you know fine. And then the, the second component was an official relationship with a land conservancy, um, which was something we wanted to do ultimately anyway, because that's another requirement from the Green Burial Council. But ideally we would have gotten permissions from the township first and then dove into some of these additional um, permitting and, and requirement things uh, because relationships with land conservancies can take quite a while. But, you know, they switched that around. It's like, okay, we will do that. So um, the obvious first choice was um, Land Conservancy of West Michigan because we were just north of the Muskegon River and they have easements, conservation easements on a lot of the property along the river. So we reached out to them and they have a scoring system and basically we scored mid-range. Um, and as long as there is a higher priority project, they will not get to things that are lower priority. So that was well over a year ago and nothing has advanced there. So it soon became apparent that we needed to try somewhere else. And the state also has a program. They can hold easements for you. Um, that's uh, part of MDARD, so Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. And our contact there, um, basically she was really excited about this. She had attended some sort of conference like 15 years ago, um, talking about how land conservancies and cemeteries could work together. And she was just sort of waiting for this to happen in Michigan, which was really exciting. So we had a site visit, we were working on easement language and everything. And um, basically we got to the point where uh, there was this memo of approval that needed to be signed by the director. And so that went to the director's desk and ideally we could have given this to the township and said, hey, they're willing to hold an easement for us. Can we proceed before we actually, you know, create the, the full easement? And in, there were some changes in the higher up or whatever. <laughs> and basically instead of getting that signature of approval, director sent it off to the legal department. And so a couple of weeks later, the legal department's response was, uh, we don't have the time or resources to look into this further. So no. And um, we have the distinction of being the only project to be rejected <laughs> by that program. So um, that was kind of strike two. And then the, the next logical choice was Michigan Nature Association because they own and manage a property just down the road from us called the Carner Blue Nature Sanctuary. And so we reached out to them and um, they did their homework and everything seems okay. And we, we've had a site visit and talked about some easement language and everything. And with that, like conceivably could be even just a month or two out from, you know, some sort of memo of approval that could be given back to the township. So um, in our mind, we're like, okay, we're getting really close to this thing. We have the things now almost in line that the township asked for well over a year ago, and we're ready to come back to them, present our things and proceed. Um, about a week and a half ago, things changed. So we got a letter from the township attorney informing us that there was a new ordinance that had been adopted by the township and uh, that had happened at the, the month's previous meeting. And five members of the board had voted um, a prohibition on all cemeteries of every kind in Brooks Township. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, blindsided by that totally. And uh, tomorrow, actually, we have a meeting with people in the township who are part of that wait list who um, actually want to be buried there. And um, there's about a dozen people. Not everyone will be there, but there are about a dozen people just specifically from that township, which is pretty encouraging because originally I thought that maybe we'd be importing most of the interest. And that definitely is the case, but there is local support, too. So we'll have a strategizing meeting because in theory, um, it would be as simple to um, overturn that ordinance as it was to vote it in, but it means that the higher ups are kind of against this, including a couple neighbors who were 
were there and offered some public comment. So um, basically, we thought we were pretty close to something. And we've, we've been kind of building something for the past few years. And now we are kind of uh, at a re-envisioning phase or something. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was a, a quick overview. I'll just show you, I guess, a, a couple pictures from the property that we have. And so we've been calling ourselves Michigan Burial, miburial.com. That's, that's the website. You can check us out there. A um, little screenshot from that website. This is the first spring, the property. It's, um, my two little kids there. This is like two and a half minutes outside of Nuevo City, but it feels very rural and, and peaceful. The spring wildflowers are nice. The, the history of the land, it, it's been, it was part of a farm at one point, but it was kind of like the back 40 that was never actually um, plowed. So at some point in the 1800s, it was logged, but ever since then it has been growing back and has a very nice natural native community. Flowering dogwood, kind of at the Northern range there. Uh, so plants are, are kind of my thing. And uh, we bought it in the middle of the winter. So I knew that the trees were decent and I knew there was a good chance of decent undergrowth as well too, but it was really, really um, special to see all the wildflowers that showed up in the spring that, that were, were there. A couple more wildflowers from the property. And um, this is an example of what a burial could look like um, or for cremated remains even. It's kind of simple. And uh, I really like the idea that nature is enough. It, it can provide all the beauty <laughs> that, that anyone could need. So there you go. That's that's who I am. That's what we've been up to. This, this is a, a hope and a dream still, but um, I'm definitely happy to be talking to other people who are wanting to get this sort of thing um, established in Michigan because definitely people are ready for this and they want this. And there are people in, in the area who want to see this thing through. So um, I'm very happy to be connecting with all like-minded folk. Thank you, Peter. There, I'm sure there's some questions. Uh, yeah. Appreciate that quick overview. Um, who's got a question? Peter, what were some of the objections that the neighbors voiced? Um, they're pretty much all unfounded. <laughs> so basically what's in the ordinance is for the health and safety of the township for the property owners and even visitors to the township, this needs to be outlawed. So that's it. The, the justification was health and welfare. Um, yeah. <laughs> Peter, what, did you? I, I assume at some point you were looking into uh, researching the uh, legal requirements for having a cemetery. Right. Are there any kind of roadblocks or red flags or issues there? On that front, no. So we did get health department approval. So Nuevo County came out and it's very simple. Basically, they dug two holes and determined that we were more than six feet above the water table. And that's all that's required from the health department's standpoint for this to be, um, you know, safe and acceptable. Um, other than that, like basically, depending on how you structure the business, that determines um, what sort of oversight and regulations there are. If you are um, part of a church, basically, there isn't state oversight, and you don't have to start with a fifty thousand dollar endowment. Um, perpetual care endowment. But if you are some other structure that could be private, like LLC or nonprofit, then you have to go through the um, state cemetery commissioner. And that involves setting up a perpetual care endowment fund and also kind of like a yearly check-in to ensure that things are up to snuff. So one of the other um, issues that the township had, and especially the attorney had, was um, 
the the history of cemeteries becoming abandoned. And so that should no longer be the case because there is legislation in the state to ensure that um, cemeteries that aren't part of churches, you know, they're set up properly from the beginning. And even like if it were to go under for some reason, that would become the state's pro um, problem, essentially not the township. So really there's there's no way that this would become a township responsibility, but that's kind of the fear. Um, and as far as green burial goes, there really aren't many regulations about that. That's kind of protected, um, you know, religious rights. And most of the, the restrictions come from the actual funeral homes or the cemeteries themselves. So like the requirements on vaults or embalming or something like that, those are um, low level, you know, cemetery funeral home type things and uh, not actually a huge issue. So haven't encountered, you know, big roadblocks like that. It's just kind of all been at the township level. Have there been any um, uh, discussions about maintenance requirements or um, uh, rest any restoration or like invasive species control or anything like that that's part of the discussion? Yeah, so that part of the discussion is kind of at the, the level of the land conservancy who we would be working with and those sorts of things would be in the conservation easement. And one of the things that I was really looking for was a location that um, because of maintenance requirements was already in an established forest because forests um, have a way of being able to take care of themselves. And basically anything less than forest in this area needs to be maintained. Like if you're trying to do a prairie that would probably include um, intermittent burns or some type of mowing or some type, basically you're fighting nature to keep it at this certain level. Um, whereas if you let it progress to kind of the, the climax situation, that that is the situation that requires the least amount of maintenance. Um, and since this has been um, more or less undisturbed for well over a hundred years, there really were not many um, invasives on it. And so that would require a little bit of management and ongoing management, but um, essentially trying to prevent as much damage um, and disturbance as possible is the way to do that. And, and that can be done through low density burials in, in a forest like this. What seems to make uh, the most sense, like the Green Barrel Council could allow up to 300 uh, burials per acre, but um, might make more sense to do 100 or 150 in a location like this. And that could have some sort of time clause on it, like maybe after 50 years or 100 years, you could open up and do the second half or something like that. Um, but really, minimizing the damage um, to help protect what is there is was the main plan and mm -hmm. um, low impact trails would would kind of be and so basically just like access would be the the main upkeep and, and thing for for maintenance thank you uh, peter what was your vision for um if this thing went forward um who would be taking care of the um, the area? Who would be uh, handling the the burials themselves? Um, can you give us a little bit of info on that? My vision was that I would be heading that up. So depending on how busy we were, it might involve you know a certain number of additional people, but um, definitely in charge of the, the land management and um, some of the burial aspects that would that would fall on me initially. Do you, did you have, do you, do, do you have a have, uh, plan for in terms of like after 30 years, put another, you know, start on top again, or how, how did you, have you processed through any of that for um, the continuation? Of yeah. So basically like reusing sites. Mm -hmm. Um. I have considered that and I've talked to some other conservation burial grounds, um, basically their thoughts on that, because I like the idea of it being useful as long as is possible. And um, it, it's definitely like in some other countries, like in Europe, 
you know, it's, it's kind of more common to essentially rent a plot instead of buy it and own it forever. So it's, it's really not that weird of a concept. And some people like that's, definitely not the norm here in the U.S., but it is possible. And as far as I can tell, there aren't rules and regulations against that. So it, it could be up to the, the plot purchasers themselves, um, whether or not they want it to be opened up after a certain period of time. And that period of time, um, like a safe period of time is kind of unknown or questionable because it depends on moisture levels and soil type and you know temperature and, and everything like that so it's i don't really know how long would be an appropriate amount of time in michigan but you know something like 50 years or 100 years or something like that would definitely be um appropriate and i do know that some people are quite interested in um basically not occupying a spot forever and having that be open to future uses. But a lot of people actually do like the idea of having a special spot on this earth that kind of holds and, and remembers, memorializes them. And when I was talking to some other conservation burial grounds, they they were basically like, yeah, we could do that, but it's, it's kind of complicated. And really, since we have a dual purpose of, of land conservation, our main idea isn't to maximize the number of people on land it's kind of to maximize the number i mean maximize the land that you know people are buried in and you know we think of it more as holding space than than taking up space so um i don't think it's a huge priority to you know reuse things because ideally this can be set up in such a way that if you need more spot, more plots, you can purchase more land and take up more land and then ultimately conserve more land that way. Um, because even if you're not doing burials anymore, it still has the purpose of community green space and all the ecosystem services that it provides. Um, and it, that function will remain um, whether or not there are burials still taking place. So. Yeah, it's possible, but it, not a huge priority, I guess. Yeah, we have the Williamson Cemetery Ordinance that theoretically the graves could be reused after 30 years, but the family who has loved ones buried there can re-rent the plot if they feel. Hmm. Uh, Peter, you can unshare your screen if you want. Okay. For now. There we Peter, go. A couple, a couple questions. Well, it sounds like you would uh, either you could have ashes or an actual body there. And uh, how, how do you plan to mark the grave sites? Um, so in the area, like it's kind of all glacial outwash plains, very sandy. But in that, there are various sized boulders. <laughs> And um, these can be obtained at like garden centers and things. There's a, a location nearby, basically from construction projects, they're doing digging and these big rocks come out and then they go there. And based, so um, a native kind of un, unpolished sort of rock that has an engraving just with the, the basic name and dates. Um, I like the idea of that. And, you know, people wouldn't have to have that, but that would be the option that I would um, be a fan of providing. Um, and then in addition, basically, because this excites me more, but I would also want to designate kind of the nearest tree as the living memorial. And so you could have a rock and a tree. Um, it doesn't make so much sense to plant a new tree in an already established forest because most of those trees would not survive. There are some kind of understory trees that do survive in that environment. Um, shrubs, flowering shrubs that are native that that could be planted along with um, a burial, but I like the idea of basically native stone and tree. Do, do you, you plan to accept either ashes or bodies? Is that correct? Yeah, both of those um, would work. By far the most interest we've had is from full body burials, people who uh, want to be buried and all the elements kind of return to nature and, the, and that cycle there. But um, there has been a good bit of interest of like people who maybe already have 
cremated remains of a loved one and they want to have that be buried in addition to that. Um, and the way trends are, cremation is becoming more and more popular. A few years ago, it crossed 50%. Um, and there definitely are ways to green cremation. So like aquamation or at some point, maybe human composting. And a lot of these cremains still do sort of end up in uh, a conventional cemetery. So it is helpful and it still does support the process and, and conservation to have cremated remains in a cemetery like this. So we would, and there really aren't um, caps, like the Green Barrel Council says 300 full body burials, but they don't really put a cap on cremated remains or um, you know the sprinkling of ashes or anything like that. So that would be a way to um, maintain functionality is to accept those sorts of things. Um, yeah, so definitely both. Peter, it sounds like you have possibly an agriculture or forestry background. So I was uh, just wondering about that. And secondly, with regard to the health and safety objections, uh, did they, the residents seem to think that they were gonna, the water would become contaminated or, or what exactly did they say were their concerns? Um, yeah, so my background is biology, and um, I've had various jobs that have to do with plants or animals. I'm in the process of finishing up a, a PhD in biology. So, um, yeah, that's, that's definitely my background. And then I don't actually know the concerns that the, the couple direct neighbors brought up. It just said they offered public comment. So, um, but I, I assume it would be something like water table because in, in that area, everyone does have wells and houses are all quite far away. Like those, um, you know, hundreds of feet or even thousands of feet. So um, yeah, that could potentially be a concern, but not actually a concern. So in that, in that county, are there really are there no other cemeteries at all anywhere? There are cemeteries. Um, they just don't want any more in that township. Okay. And then so they, they did cite that there are plenty of other cemeteries within 50 miles, um, which is true. There aren't, I would say there aren't plenty of other conservation burial grounds <laughs> where people can be buried like this. Um, mm -hmm. But so basically, they're just scared of the unknown. I mean, that's really yeah. what's going on, I am sure, is they're just scared of the unknown and don't yeah. understand what it really means. Yeah. So I don't think it's ultimately about the reasons they provided. Like they provided some reasons that, you know, people could be concerned about. But I think it's more of like, oh, this is kind of new and different and scary. And mm -hmm. we would just rather not deal with it at all. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand the environmental impact of a traditional um, cemetery probably as yeah. well. Yeah. So one of the, in the initial letter from the attorney where the, the township reached out for some legal advice, one of his objections was like, well, if this becomes abandoned, which it won't, um, there could be a mausoleum and that could fall apart and there could be bodies falling out of it. <laughs> and like, no, we won't have a mausoleum and there won't be bodies falling out of it. They'll be in the ground and they'll be fully decomposed. And so like, these aren't issues, but yeah, I, those have been issues, I guess, in other cemeteries, so. Did you do a, like a green burial presentation before the township board, before you ask permission or very, yeah, our first meeting with them, we had um, basically a printout with a number of informational like slides to describe the concept and what we were hoping to do. Um, yeah. But it, it probably should have involved a lot more education and one on ones with the specific people instead of just like, okay, you, you gave us some requirements, we're gonna work on those, then we're gonna come back 
um, yeah, thinking about how things could have been done. <laughs> Well, this is a groundbreaking effort. Appreciate your pioneering spirit. Mm -hmm. So going forward, Peter, you are hoping that you can mobilize um, a large enough group that um, you can go in front of the township again and hopefully um, change their mind. I mean, do you see a lot of, I mean, how optimistic are you about all of this? Yeah, I'm not very optimistic about it. Um, and even if something were to be able to be changed, like I don't imagine that it would, I mean, I feel like it would take years, <laughs> you know? Um, so we'll have this planning strategizing meeting tomorrow and kind of assess what we feel like we can do. Um, so yeah, could fight it, could have a educational campaign, could, could sell it, try somewhere else. I, I don't really know what, so basically the thing that I do know that we have is the contact information of a lot of people who actually want this and, you know, where there's a will, there's a way. Um, but I am, um, yeah, wanting to work with anyone really. So, um, and, and Kim or Bruce may speak to this more than I, I just want to bring this up. So they have been trying to find an, uh, either a cemetery that could be a hybrid or you know, some option in addition to Williamston here in the, um, the Lansing area. And um, yeah. it, it has been a little bit difficult, but yesterday um, Kim shared with us a letter by um, Jared Harmon, who was the head of the Mid Michigan Conservancy land or something. And he actually offered a relationship, which so in a way, this is what you yeah. had to look for, right? You need had to look. So I'm wondering, if all of this can sort of be brought together, I mean, Kim or Bruce or whoever is on that committee may be able to speak more to it. I don't know if you guys talked to Jared and do you know Jared, um, Peter? I mean, do you know that conservancy group? Um, I haven't had contact with them. Yeah, I'm aware of it, but yeah. So yeah, I think that would be huge because really you just need like one interested person who either has land <laughs> or connections to land or connections to a land conservancy that wants to do this. Cause um, like some of the other conservation burial grounds have kind of started in conjunction with the land conservancy, like uh, the big one in, in Tennessee there with the nature conservancy there. And um, so that is definitely a way that is probably more likely, likely to work, but finding, so what's the status of Meridian township like are they okay with new cemeteries and are they okay with green burial and i don't know what's the zoning like because <laughs> i think it really has to be the township because i have heard of other people like uh, some guy called me from uh kind of kalamazoo area he was like hey i have 100 acres and i want have wanted to do this but the township has said there is absolutely no way we will let you do this because we want your land to be um, developed. And so like, we'll never let this pass. <laughs> so it, it really seems to be whether or not a township is willing to have something like this. Peter, I, um, I, I don't know him well, we've just started communicating, but Jared Harmon is with the Mid-Michigan Land Conservancy. Yeah. And he has expressed, you know, a real interest in you know, partnering mm -hmm. with us. And as far as what we're doing in Meridian Township, we're very informal, this Green Burial Committee. Yeah. Um, we're basically, you know, just gathering information and uh, talking to as many people as we can. Um, and so far, uh, the people that I've spoken to or written to, um, is it one of the Ingham County Commissioners, the um, president of the Lansing Historic Cemeteries. Um, oh, and I'm blanking on you right now. But uh, the other thing I was gonna suggest and that I have not yet done is um, I was gonna get in touch with local religious leaders mm -hmm. and Native American communities and see if this is something that you know, they would be interested in and support. Yeah. Um, 
Jewish and Muslim burials, for all intents and purposes, are green burials because the body has to be in contact with the soil. And um, the way they do that in a traditional cemetery is they turn that stupid cement vault upside down, mm -hmm. you know, so they can mow. But um, I think that might be an audience there. But I think the big thing is just education. Because obviously, you know, the people in the township down there really don't understand what's involved in a green burial. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you put your email address in the chat, mm -hmm. I can uh, send you what resources we've found so far. And I don't, you know, I don't know if it would help you to... Um, I don't know, maybe suggest another meeting where they can reconsider their cemetery ordinance. Um, yeah. I don't know how dead set they are against it. Yeah. It might be interesting also to provide a letter of support from our committee. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud in terms of. Yeah. And um, there's also a group in the Keweenaw Peninsula that. <laughs> has connected cemeteries and, you know, is kind of promoting this idea. Um, so there definitely is a case to be made and there are a lot of people and we do have a lot of signatures. Um, I mean, my fear is that they'll say, oh, but none of these people are in our township. So like go somewhere else. <laughs> so that's why we're starting with the, the actual people in the township, um, but yeah. So Peter, I have um, religious, eventually religious leaders over in, in Grand Rapids. So I will email you. Um, they just had a, a meeting connecting 16 different pastors. So okay. I will email you and see what, if that can help. Um, I'm not yeah. exactly sure which county they're in, but I will email you and see if that can help you a little bit. Yeah. And how big is your township, Peter? How many people live there? Uh, maybe like 3,000 something like that yeah um and at the same time we were getting our health department um approval the the guy was doing a new amish cemetery there are some amish in the area so different township but like it was just a very normal thing you know and i'm i'm sure that they do green burials as well um but yeah Peter, one other thing I was going to suggest, um, the Mid-Michigan Land Conservancy works to keep farmland farmland. Mm -hmm. So the person that had the acreage in Kalamazoo, yeah. um, what the, if I understand correctly, the Mid-Michigan Land Conservancy puts the land in um, kind of a trust mm -hmm. type things so that it can't be developed it has to be kept as farmland yeah. or you know something suitable other than being developed so i don't know if that would um you know if that person might want to contact the local land conservancy there and see if that's something you know that they would support because if he's yeah. got that much acreage yeah um what they can do because I, I asked Jared about, you know, solar arrays um, on some of the farmland. And he said that they can section off, you know, an area of the farm, you know, for some other use and maintain the rest of the farm as agriculture land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that because once it's already... Um not developable, not, not developable, maybe the township would approve some more uses. Uh, is there um, the Manistee National Forest nearby your site as well? Yeah, technically we are, I guess, an in-holding within that forest. Within. So it's, it's a very patchy forest that basically came came to be because a lot of land was abandoned because it was not suitable for agriculture. And so all the parts that went back to the government became the forest and all the parts that stayed in private ownership, you know, are still in private ownership. So yeah, but we're within the bounds of the Manistee National Forest. Hmm. 
I wonder if there's something that uh, you could do in along those lines with the Forest Service. Yeah, I mean, what we're trying to do, it is very much in line with the master plan of the, the township. Like they appreciate green space and they want to maintain the rural character. And like one of the main things uh, and attractions is nature. So like there's the, the Muskegon River that flows right through it, which is, that's one of the most popular sections. And they have a couple of nature preserves and, and trails and the North Country Trail goes through there. And so like, um, outdoor recreational activity and, and green space is really their thing. And this fits into that, um, but it has an additional sort of scary purpose to it. And once you have this all established, you would have it open for people taking hikes and walks, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. it's an additional nature preserve. Wouldn't be fenced off and this is private land, right? Yeah. I mean, I have to say, um, you would be the very first conservation cemetery in Michigan, right? So there is no um, no other, but there are a couple in Ohio, and I'm wondering yeah. um, if they are willing to even, if somebody would come and say, you know, this is what we have, and these right. have been concerns. I mean, it's, it's a little bit different than a hybrid cemetery or a traditional cemetery, so I'm wondering if, if that input would I mean, yeah, change. I mean, you're right. It's probably not easy to change. If these yeah. people are influential who don't want it, yeah. you're up to a big fight and that is just too bad. Really. Yeah, so Illinois has one and uh, there's, yeah, three in Ohio. There's Foxfield and Coco Singh. Right. And I have been in contact with at least those two because I got copies of their conservation easements. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, gathering people like that and including, you know, the, the Keweenaw um, Green Burial Alliance or whatever it's called, um, you know, they're, they're pretty down to earth people who have been doing this and, and I feel like could, yeah, connect and, and uh, yeah, I don't know, get rid of some of the fear, but yeah. that, yeah, it all means that whatever we do in in brooks township is is a long ways away and That's potentially true. won't come yeah. to anything you know i i think it would be a good idea to maybe publicize you know like a public meeting present slash presentation yeah and you know just give them tons and tons of information on you know how it's worked here and other places and you know what you anticipate and you know run through everything you know all the details you know with a, a larger group of the community rather than just the board and the immediate neighbors yeah you know and that might because what you need to do is sway public opinion yeah and you know, some, sometimes there, that's the hardest thing. Yeah, to act in the interest of the township. So if it's clear that people want this, then you know it, that should be overturned. But um, and there is a good mix of, I guess, conservative and liberal there, because um, like a number of you know people from Grand Rapids have cottages there or have retired there. But overall, it, it probably is conservative, and the conservative approach to something new is to say no. So. <laughs> Yeah, I will say, though, I was just at a family reunion and we walked the cemetery to just see where our ancestors are, are at and yada, yada. And, you know, my the 80 year old generation have their plots and they're going to be there. And the younger of us are like, that's not at all what we want. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I so the trend for me is that it's going to go in this direction. It's just going to take time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I agree with Kim of just talking to people in the area and continuing like doing town halls or whatever that's yeah. not even part of the township just getting people thinking differently um i would yeah. i i would think a whole lot of people would be in support of something you know i mean yes have to educate to have them understand what something different is but i just think that there's a lot of the younger generations that are just not going to go 
in the standard way that has been. Yeah. Um, yeah, what I've found is basically like once somebody understands the idea, they're on board with it. And it doesn't really matter what side of the spectrum you're on. Um, people appreciate nature and connection to nature. And maybe that's, you know, the, the dust to dust concept, or, or maybe it's, um, you know, sustainability and environmentalism or whatever, whatever. but it, it still kind of converges on this, like, yeah, that would be a, a nice peaceful <laughs> way to um, uh, deal with my body after I'm done with it. And um, as far as like the age range of people who are interested in this, that's really encouraging too, because like people on, on the wait list, we, we ask the age and there's a very good spread from, you know, everyone from 18 all the way up until their eighties. And, you know, a, a typical cemetery isn't probably getting interest from somebody in their twenties and thirties, but like we have a lot of interest in this and people like talking about this and people frequently ask me to give talks on this and you know it's like made the news tv and and uh radio and everything because like this is a, a very interesting idea that that people click with once once they kind of understand it so yeah it, it does involve education for sure well, and I appreciated Gabby's um, presentation too, because she talked about the history of what cemeteries are. And, and mm -hmm. I mean, so many people thinking that the way it is now has always been is not, is not the case either. So the idea yeah. of going back and, I mean, just, just the educational piece of understanding that, that this isn't necessarily all the, the way that it's always been or needs to continue going forward is, yeah, you know. Yeah. And the role of the cemetery in society has kind of changed as, as well. Like, um, you know, a few hundred years back, kind of like the church graveyard uh, where the church took care of those, those souls that had been departed. And then it kind of transitioned into this more like park, like garden type aspect. And then now we have this memorial park. And um, I feel like the next step in the evolution of a cemetery is for it to be a nature preserve. <laughs> um, that multi-purpose there I really like. So yeah, that, that helps it stay relevant with the times. To kind of um, piggyback on um, those ideas, you might also reach out to the schools, you know, if there's like an environmental club or something similar in the high schools or, you know, some Eagle Scout looking for a project Mm -hmm. kind of thing you know the more you can get the word out and you know kids well obviously you know most of them are too young to you know sign off on wanting yeah. a green burial they can be very influential and they can pass along information yeah kids are our way to the parents <laughs> yeah and just a, a shout out to my dad was a retired biology teacher. So shout yeah. out to the biology PhDs. <laughs> well, I appreciate you being part of our educational here, Peter, and for the Gabby for, re, for uh, connecting with Peter. And um, We've got about uh, 10 more minutes if people have any more remaining questions or if you have anything else you'd like to share, Peter. Um, um, I just got another question from Bruce in the chat there about contact with funeral business. So I have talked to a few funeral homes. Several of them have reached out to me. Um, there's one kind of larger chain from the east side of the state that called a while back that was basically just to say like, hey, we exist and we support you and um, like we would like to have some sort of <laughs> relationship once once you're up and running um, that there's a local group of funeral homes like they have one in Rockford and Sparta and the closest one in Nuego and the one in Rockford is certified by the Green Burial Council and the the guy who set that up he's a, a co-owner and now he's at at the one in Sparta and that's his, but he's very supportive of Green Burial. And I've, I've talked to um, another one in Grand Rapids, another one in, in Holland. And basically these are people who have reached out because this is like a, a niche part of the market that they want to be involved in, or they have had somebody come to them and they're trying to 
pre-planned and they have mentioned like this is what they want and then they've reached out to us and like oh, we need more information like some people are asking about this what's what's going on so i i think i mean i haven't tried to talk to many beyond that i i figure that um once the place is established, then we can figure out who will and will not work with us. But um, in general, like funeral homes should and do want to provide people with, with what they're asking for. And um, they're all capable of doing green burials, whether or not they call it that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I did the same thing. I, I asked if there were local funeral homes who would support this because, you know, if you have a cemetery, nobody wants to help you bury their people. And yeah. it's a problem. And one funeral director clearly said to me, this is the trend. We would be stupid if we wouldn't at least support it. I mean, they may have to learn. Just had to, They had to learn to deal with more cremations, you know, in their mm -hmm. business. They want to make some money. But you're right. They want to support families. And if I always say to people when I give a talk, you as a consumer need to demand these things. The mm -hmm. funeral homes, they will provide service if you say this is what we want. It's yeah. the, that's, that's how it is. And they will come on board. And some more than others, I have heard funeral directors say to me, oh, the corpses don't look so good if they are not embalmed and I don't want that yeah. to reflect negatively on me. I mean, literally. Yeah. But um, others say, Good grief, we want to finally get rid of this embalming business. I mean, so yeah, it's all about the yeah. consumer needing to say we want twin burial grounds, we want funeral homes to support us, we want conservation burial grounds. It that's how it has to work. And I really, yeah. really appreciate so much what you're doing and all the years you have put into it. And I can just feel for you this <laughs> sort of letdown after all yeah. of this sort of thinking, you're almost there. And then you know, so I just really hope it works out for you, really. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of comments from other funeral directors is that like they haven't really seen many requests for green burials on on the consumer side. But mm -hmm. I really think that's, um, you know, an issue of people not knowing that's an option or what to ask for. And once they do know, then they would start asking. But since there aren't that many options and you kind of have to do a lot of digging, um, people just don't know to ask. And that's why they, there hasn't been that demand. Need to educate the people. Huh? We've had, a, um, we have people in the township that are pro-growth. We have people in the township who are no growth. Um, Meridian Township prides itself on being a green community. Um, so I think this type of thing would increase the potential to attract people to the township if yeah, if this was one of the green features that was highlighted. So I don't think it's an either or thing. I just want to mention that it's always been a, it seems like it's been a struggle in the township over the years, but some of the greenest amenities have become real attractors and mm -hmm. keep people in the township. Yeah, it's a win-win. <laughs> Have you spoken at all to the, is it the Manistee Forest? Is that right? Manistee, Have yeah. Have you spoken to any of the um, people in the, the forest hierarchy to see how they feel about, um, you know, a green burial forest? No, I haven't. I haven't really spoken to anyone at the state level like that. You might be able to generate some more interest. You know, the more you can show support, you know, for a green burial um, conservancy, the more likely it is you'll be able to change minds in the township. Mm -hmm. So if you can build your support base with people that are interested in, you know, willing to, you know, at least say they support it. Yeah. Um, you, that might help you out there. Apparently the trees have been talking to each other. <laughs> yeah. Any other part, parting comments? No pun intended. 
departing comments. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us, and we hope to keep in touch. Um, I uh, just, Kim has become a fabulous resource, as well as Bruce and Gabby, who are on our sort of green burial um, ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll continue to learn from each other and make progress. All right. Anybody else have any words of wisdom to share before we tune out? All right, we'll see everybody uh, next week, or not everybody, but those who want to come. Um, I, we have heard from one of our progressive developers, Brent Forsberg. He's going to join us in a couple of weeks. Um, don't have the exact date yet, but he's been doing work with tiny homes and other sort of creative development projects. Um, and Peter, thanks again. Thank you, yeah. Peter. Nice to thanks. meet you all. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And I'll email you the list of. Um, contacts and things that I've found and I, fingers crossed that we can get that turned around for you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>